My name is Candy Crowley, and I'm a reporter. I have covered. Thank you. <laughs> I've covered U.S. servicemen and women in war zones. I have covered them at their bases, and I have covered them in their homes. And tonight, I bring you some facts and a story. The story comes from interviews I did for a documentary. I talked with combat veterans from five wars, some living, as one described it, back and forth across the edge of crazy, and others, as one elderly vet put it, who just got on with it. The day I talked to him, he told me the story of the man he first killed, the first man he killed. They were alone, the two of them, uh, and met up with each other in the jungle in the Philippines. Uh, he was 10 feet from this Japanese soldier when he killed him, and I said, what was your first reaction? And he said, well, I did what we were taught to do, and that was to go through his pockets and his gear to see if I could find some maps because uh, perhaps we could find where an arsenal was in the jungle. And he said, but you know, we were always so hungry because food um, wasn't around at, at a mess hall somewhere. And so he said, I, as I was going through his gear, I found a packet of rice. And so I sat down. He said, I remember there was a river right where we were. And I sat down beside him, and I ate his rice. I spent the whole day with him. He told me other stories of uh, other men that uh, he had killed and friends of his who had been killed. And I said, and you just came back? And he said, I just came back and I got on with it. And I said, and you never had any problems? And he said, well, you know, my wife, you know, for a long time didn't like to be asleep with me because I thrashed in my sleep and I had nightmares. And, and then there was this long pause and he sort of looked at me and he got really emotional and he said, you know what? And I said, what? And he said, I hate rice. We were 50 years past this experience. He had been married for about that long. He had children, he had grandchildren, and the thought of rice made him cry. Um, they need our help. I think this is a wonderful night for a wonderful cause for veterans across the years. Now some facts. In fiscal year 2010, more than 408,000 vets with a primary or secondary diagnosis of PTSD were treated at VA medical centers and clinics. The VA says on average 18 veterans commit suicide every day. Approximately 40% of homeless men are veterans. It is estimated that nearly 50% of veterans with symptoms of PTSD have not received any help for, for it, and many who have received help have not received enough. Dan Burks was 19 when he enlisted to fight in Vietnam. December 18th, 1967, Newsweek. Yeah, five days after my birthday. This is a, a story called The Day's Work. And this is my unit. We went out and got ambushed. And this is me. Yeah, doing, doing my job. We were attacked at this place called Buddha. That fight went on for two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. The first night, I killed 14 people. There were 20, 2,500 of them and 250 of us. The next morning, in front of my fighting position, 18 of our men did. So this is very, very, very distressing, and it creates huge amounts of distress in, you know, in, your, in your system, in your system. And then um, later in the magazine, coincidentally, is this. This is an article about Marishi Mayashogi and a couple guys in my, in my platoon. One of, one of them got the magazine, and he came running over. He said, Burks, you got to read this. So I did. And I said, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Because it talks about stress release, about, about becoming a whole person. So then the next part of the story is getting home. And that's a whole big deal because things changed. Things changed. All of a sudden, you're in a different culture. All, all these people don't understand you. They have no idea. They don't realize that, that you're always, always still in the rubber plantation of the jungle. You're always on an adrenaline high. You're looking to protect your buddies. You're looking to protect yourself. You're looking to kill the enemy. <laughs> I, I stopped talking to my parents. I had 
really bad relationships with other people. Things were going to shit. I did not feel happiness. I did not feel sorrow. I did not feel surprise. My feelings were gone. So one day, um, my wife comes home, says, hey, I saw a poster about Transcendental Meditation. And I remembered, <laughs> I remembered that article in that magazine about Maharishi, and then I said I was going to do this. And so I go in, and he's, you know, he says, okay, sit down, do this. And I could not believe what happened. It was the difference between heaven and hell. It was absolutely transformational. All that feeling of, of stress and all that feeling of heaviness, I could feel it melt away from my head to my feet. And from that moment on, things changed. <laughs> things changed. No more drugs, no more alcohol. Life changed. My emotions came back. <laughs> my life came back. The initial research on the effects of Transcendental Meditation in treating PTSD offers so much hope. Reduced anxiety, depression, hypervigilance, and insomnia, as well as reductions in substance abuse, violent behavior, and suicidal tendencies. Better than many things being tried at far less a cost. Tonight, I'm pleased to announce the launch of the David Lynch Foundation's Operation Warrior Wellness a national outreach to teach Transcendental Meditation to 10,000 veterans suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. And I want you to meet a few members of the Board of Advisors for Operation Warrior Wellness. Jerry Yellen, a decorated P-51 captain and pilot in World War II. He flew 19 missions over Japan and serves as co-chair of Operation Warrior Wellness. <laughs> Colonel Dr. Brian Reese, Command Surgeon, 63rd Regional Support Command with 34 years of commissioned military service. Colonel Reese recently completed his fourth deployment in Afghanistan. He serves as co-chair of Operation Warrior Wellness. Brenda Marlin Banks is a United States Army Reserve Lieutenant Colonel with 27 years of commissioned service and eight years of enlisted service. And Ed Schloman, a distinguished Vietnam Master Sergeant in the Marines. David George, an Army infantryman who served two years in Iraq. And Dan Burks, whom you just met in that video, was a sergeant of the Army, Army Infantry in Vietnam and a captain and infantry company commander, 10th Mountain Division of the Army Reserves. Dan received a purple heart and two bronze stars with a V device for valor. <laughs>